Hi, in my last video, we talked about the common reasons why people suddenly slump and die. But today, I will be explaining how you can reduce your risk of sudden death or even prevent it from happening altogether. My name is Dr. Tolu. I'm a medical doctor, medical content creator, and my videos on health have been watched by tens of millions of people all over the world, helping many along the way. If you haven't watched the first video where I discussed the common causes of sudden death, well, you're in luck. Just click on the link in the description below. I put the video link there for you to watch. So watch it first before you watch this video. All right, guys, let's get straight to it. The first on my list is sudden cardiac death. So first off, let's talk about how you can reduce your risk of developing sudden cardiac arrest. A cardiac arrest happens when the heart's electrical system malfunctions. But most of the time, it doesn't just malfunction out of the blue. This heart malfunction is usually triggered by an underlying lying condition and that's why preventing a cardiac arrest starts with protecting your heart health here's what you can do first know your family history if you know that in your family you've had one or two people who suddenly slumped and died then you need to act fast you need to get screened early what that means is go see your healthcare provider and explain to them why you are seeing them explain to them that in your family one or more people have suddenly dropped dead and you want to get screened for the possible causes of this another thing you need to do is if you have high blood pressure high cholesterol or diabetes you need to manage these conditions properly the next tip is to do regular heart checkups this is particularly important for those who are 40 years and above or those who have the risk factors for sudden cardiac arrest some of these risk factors are the high blood pressure high cholesterol diabetes that we mentioned earlier another thing that can be absolutely crucial in your bid to prevent having a cardiac arrest is to avoid smoking and to limit alcohol if you already smoke then you may need help with it because just stopping by yourself can be very difficult in fact for some people it's almost impossible so you may need help for it speak to your healthcare provider and if you take alcohol then you need to limit your alcohol intake in fact to be honest if you can stop taking alcohol completely i would advise that you do so because there is no safe level of alcohol intake that said more realistically if you know that stopping alcohol completely will be very difficult then limit your alcohol intake exercise regularly and when i say exercise i don't necessarily mean going to the gym and lifting heavy a simple 30 minute walk every day is good exercise for your heart so if you know that you are very busy then you can just engage in 30 minutes of brisk walking that can make all the difference if you are diagnosed with any heart rhythm condition for instance long qt syndrome please take your medication and follow up with your doctor regularly don't miss your appointments guys and the last thing on my list for how to prevent sudden cardiac arrest is to learn cpr cardiopulmonary resuscitation it can be the difference between life and death the second on my list is heart attack so let's talk about how you can reduce your risk of or prevent a heart attack do you know the number one cause of heart attacks i'll tell you blocked arteries what blocks these arteries plaque buildup so when you look at an artery for those who eat a lot of unhealthy food plaque may start to build up in the arteries and ultimately block blood supply you don't want that to happen so here is what you can do to reduce your risk number one eat a heart healthy diet so that means less salt less trans fats more fruits more vegetables more lean protein more complex carbs the second thing you should look to do is to stay active and if you are not already active then get active this keeps your arteries flexible and keeps blood flowing you also need to work on controlling your blood pressure and your cholesterol levels if you smoke quit smoking and if you don't smoke please don't start it's also important that you learn to manage your stress levels this is because chronic stress can increase the heart's workload and you don't want that to happen so whatever your method of stress management is whether it's listening to music yoga journaling finding someone to talk to whatever it is that works for you for some people is even taking a walk enjoying the sunshine feeling the cool breeze on their bodies whatever your method of managing stress is please use it effectively to reduce your stress levels also if you are over 35 years or you have the risk factors for developing a heart attack so you know the usual if you smoke if you have high blood pressure high cholesterol diabetes or if someone has had a heart attack in the family 
those are risk factors so if you fall under any of these categories whether you are above 35 or you have any of these risk factors or maybe even a combination of you being above 35 and having these risk factors get regular checkups oh and one more thing never ever ignore chest pain even if the chest pain is mild or it stays just for a bit and then goes away let your doctor be the one to decide whether it is serious or not always report chest pain to your doctor the third cause of sudden death that we'll be talking about how to reduce your risk of is pulmonary embolism just to recap a pulmonary embolism happens when a blood clot travels from another part of the body usually the legs all the way to the lungs and then lodges in the lungs this can then block blood flow and if it is large enough it can even lead to sudden death here's what you can do to reduce your risk of a pulmonary embolism number one stay active this is especially important for those who take long flights so let's say you are on a flight from say the uk to australia or from anywhere really to australia because australia is just far from everywhere it's important to stretch your legs on long flights like those every one to two hours this also applies for any kind of journey not just flight so if you are going to be taking a long bus journey or car journey anything that would mean you are just sitting still for many hours stretch your legs every one to two hours and for those who may be in hospitals maybe on long admissions it's important for them to also stretch their legs every one to two hours if this won't be possible then wearing compression socks can be very helpful and also they may need to be on blood thinners just to reduce the risk of a clot forming because it is that clot that may then end up causing a pulmonary embolism it's also important that you drink enough water this is because dehydration can thicken your blood and that can increase the risk of developing a clot which can then increase your risk of a pulmonary embolism like i said earlier blood thinners may be necessary in some categories of people for instance those who have had surgery or those who are pregnant or for those who may be immobile for a while blood thinners may be recommended in them if you have a family history of clotting disorders please speak to your doctor about getting screened for them because you are probably at higher risk of developing them and finally please know the signs of a clot so basically if you have any unexplained leg swelling or the leg appears red or the leg is painful or the leg just feels a bit hotter than the other leg please please go see your doctor asap this is because those are signs of a clot the fourth thing we'll be looking at is a stroke so let's talk about how you can reduce your risk of having a stroke first of all do you know that 80 percent of strokes are preventable that means if five people have a stroke four of them could have been prevented so let's talk about how to prevent a stroke number one control high blood pressure high blood pressure is by far the biggest risk factor for developing a stroke so please keep it under control if you're on medication for blood pressure stay on your medication even if after using medication for some time your blood pressure starts looking normal don't stop because it is likely that medication that even made the blood pressure to look normal so don't now stop the medication don't take it maybe every other day please take it as prescribed and don't stop it until your doctor asks you to and please share this information as well with your loved ones who are on medication for blood pressure it's not the time to stop your medication and be taking herbs or drinking things or trying to go natural please your life or the life of your loved ones might depend on this information also reduce salt intake if you have diabetes or high cholesterol work on controlling them stop smoking i'm sure by now you can see that there is simply no good reason to smoke exercise this improves circulation and can even help to reduce your blood pressure eat more plant-based foods like your fruits veggies complex carbs my favorite oats for me personally i start my mornings six days a week with oats i have oats with semi-skimmed milk and that's because for instance in my family a couple of people have high blood pressure and so i'm very very conscious to eat as healthy as i can to keep as fit as i can to get as much sleep as i can and to manage stress as much as i can also for those that may have heart conditions that cause irregular heartbeats like atrial fibrillation please take your blood thinners and other medications as prescribed they can help to reduce your risk of developing clots and finally limit alcohol intake limit your intake of processed unhealthy foods no one is saying you cannot have the occasional pizza or soda but please limit it i would advise try not to take it more than once every week if you want to watch my video on how to recognize a stroke and what to do when someone looks like they're having a stroke just click on the link in the video description i've put the link to the video there 
for you to watch and learn. The information there has saved lives. And the last on the list is an aortic dissection. So let's talk about how to reduce the risk of an aortic dissection in yourself and your loved ones. So a brief recap on what an aortic dissection is. To understand what it is, we first need to talk about the largest blood vessel in your body that supplies blood from your heart to the rest of your body, and that is the aorta. If the aorta tears suddenly, it can cause massive bleeding and almost instant collapse. And that's what we call an aortic dissection. So here is how you can prevent it, or at least reduce your risk of developing it. Once again, it's about your blood pressure. You need to keep your blood pressure under control. I hope you guys are noticing that managing your blood pressure is just top of the list for all these conditions. No be mistaken. Apart from keeping your blood pressure under control, you also need to avoid stimulants like cocaine. This is because stimulants can spike your blood pressure and put a strain on your blood vessels. Also, if you have a family history of aortic disease or connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome, please make sure you are monitored regularly by your healthcare provider. Never ever ignore sudden chest or back pain especially if it is severe or if it feels like a tearing pain or a ripping pain. Treat as an emergency and get to a hospital ASAP. Finally, this is for my gym rats, those who love lifting heavy. Be careful. Going to the gym is good. Being careless at the gym is bad. Let me explain. If you do heavy lifting at the gym, please don't push beyond your limits. If you are new to the gym, don't go straight for the heaviest weights. Start small, build up gradually, and don't overdo it. And this is especially important for those who already have underlying conditions like high blood pressure or those who have a family history of heart condition, those sort of people. Please take it easy at the gym. This is because extreme strain on your chest can be a trigger for those with weak aortic walls. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I'll leave you with this. When you see people suddenly slump and die, as sudden as it might look, it doesn't always come out of nowhere. In many cases, the signs were always there. It's just that they were ignored, misunderstood, or probably never checked. The purpose of this video and the video from last week is to help you know what to look out for and to help you know what to do if you have any of the risk factors or if your loved ones have any of the risk factors. The purpose of both videos is to help you know the subtle signs so that you can stop a tragic situation before it even happens. And I hope these videos have helped you do so. If you found this video useful, please share it with your family and your loved ones so that they can learn as well. If you've watched this video up until this point, then it tells me that you want to be very intentional about taking your health seriously. So I want to know exactly who you are. Just comment yes in the comment section. That way I will know this is an intentional person. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you will definitely enjoy the next video now showing on your screen. Click, watch, and enjoy. Bye.